All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining in today's uh, webinar. Uh, just as some uh, meeting reminders, uh, this meeting will be uh, recorded and it will be posted at the MDH uh, web page uh, that is uh, listed here, and it will shortly be also available in the chat option. Uh, at the end uh, of the presentation, we will have a Q and A uh, question and answers session, uh, which would be about an hour long, uh, where you, uh, all of you will have the opportunity to uh, ask your questions about the presentation, and you can submit uh, your questions uh, anytime uh, during the presentation in the uh, chat uh, function of. Uh, of teams, uh, so you will find the chat function present on the upper um, bar of teams if you're not familiar with it, uh, so you can click on the icon that says chat, uh, place your questions there and uh, we will get to them after the presentation um, is over. OK, so uh, without further ado, let's get started. So today's presentation uh, would be about the uh, lead and copper site plan uh, template. And my name is uh, Tariq Bastawisi. I'll uh, be presenting uh, this information to all of you today. All right, so the first question that probably a lot of you uh, might have already is what is uh, the lead and copper site plan template? So it is uh, an Excel a workbook that tracks and confirms uh, the tier number for lead and copper sites. Uh, so uh, again, here there is uh, the link, uh, which will be shortly posted on the chat function if it's not already. And uh, for your convenience, also if you prefer using your mobile device, uh, you can uh, scan this QR code and uh, you can scan this QR code uh, and it will show up on your mobile device. All right. So uh, just as a confirmation, uh, can you all hear me um, in the in the in the Teams meeting? Ian, uh, place your you can just confirm that in the chat uh, for me. Yep. Uh, OK, thank you very much for that confirmation. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. So uh, yeah, so let's continue. So so one of the one of the main questions here is what is a tier number? So a tier number is a classification that is given for lead and copper sites uh, to establish their risk factor uh, for the release of lead or copper in the distribution system. Uh, so based on the lead and copper rule, the LCR, it is categorized, it has four categories, with tier one being the highest risk for the release of lead, or, uh, lead and copper into the distribution, and tier four being the lowest risk for it to release uh, lead uh, or copper in uh, to the distribution system. So why do we go through the hassle or go through the effort of assigning these uh, tiers uh, for, for sites in lead and copper? Firstly, it is a rule in the CFR, the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, lead and copper in section 14186, which uh, requires all sites for lead and copper sampling to be assigned a tier. Uh, historically, of course, many of you already have been collecting from sites uh, for lead and copper sampling. However, the, the details for those sites do not reinforce the confidence uh, in those sample results as they have not been assigned uh, a tier uh, with, the, with the specific criteria that we'll be talking about um, momentarily here. And it's also a top priority for uh, EPA uh, to, to address this for compliance. So how are those tier numbers uh, assigned in the LCR? Now, this probably is one of the most uh, important slides in this presentation, uh, and it 
basically classifies the tiers uh, that will be assigned for sites. So if you pull your attention to the green bar on top, which is tier number one, within every tier, there are also sub tiers. So for example, in tier one, you have uh, the, the first tier within tier one, number one, are sites with lead service lines. Now, if you have sites with lead service lines in them, you must collect from those tiers before going forward to other tiers. So for example, you have lead service lines, you will have to collect at least 50% of your uh, from your sites, uh, from those lead service lines. However, it is recommended uh, that you collect all of your sites from lead service lines if you do have lead service lines. And then once those sites have been, uh, once you've used all of those sites with lead service lines, and then you move to the second uh, subcategory, which is lead uh, in home plumbing. Once you're done with that, and you don't have any more sites with lead, uh, with with uh, with lead in home plumbing. You then go to the third priority within the first tier, which is lead goosenecks, and then you move forward again uh, to the fourth uh, subcategory, which is copper plumbing uh, with lead solder. Now, let's say you don't have any of those. You don't have any tier ones. Uh, all your single-family homes don't have any of those uh, subcategories and then you move then after that you move to the second uh, tier which is tier two which is basically the same thing as the first tier except it is in a multifamily home residence and once you've gone through it and uh, let's say you don't have any more sites to take from those then you go to the third tier so it's a step-by-step -step process and so the third tier are single family homes with copper plumbing with lead solder installed before 1983. And if still your sites do not fall within the third tier, those sites become tier four. And basically, if your entire community is built post 1985, or the entire community has POE or POU treatment, meaning point of use or point of entry treatment, then uh, those, those sites would be at tier four. And remember, you would need to collect from cold water, uh, from cold water tabs when you're, when you're sampling for lead and copper, and the sites must not have a point of use or point of entry treatment, such as softeners or reverse osmosis uh, when you're sampling for lead and copper unless they are tier four. So, uh, the Excel sheet that we'll be discussing today, uh, this is a snapshot from that Excel sheet, and it also still it outlines the same thing that we've just discussed now. However, in a, in a more of a flow sheet uh, process, or of, uh, yeah, flow sheet process. So, for instance, in tier one, let's say, You've, you're going through this uh, and you say single family homes with lead service lines. Let's say your system does not have any lead service lines, so it would be a no and then you would go down and then you would ask yourself, well, single family homes with internal lead plumbing. And if you do answer yes to that, you then click on the status bar which will explain uh, to you that uh, if you've ex exhausted all the sites from that first category, which is single family homes with ser lead service lines, you can then sample from this site. And we'll get more to that, but this is just a simple snapshot uh, for now. All right, uh, off to the exciting part. Uh, so we will uh, be walking through uh, this Excel workbook with all of you. Um, again, the link has been uh, posted uh, on the chat and you can click on that link. And if you prefer using uh, your mobile device, you can uh, scan this QR code uh, and, and um, it will take you to the web page as well. So um, we'll just wait a couple of minutes for everyone to uh, navigate through this web page, try to click on this web page uh, and, and we'll move forward from there.
All right. So when you click on that web page, uh, it should take you to this page over here, which is the lead and copper site plan uh, updates. In this web page, uh, it will include all the information that you would need regarding the site plan templates and uh, fact sheets uh, and tutorial uh, guidelines. And this recorded video will be posted on this uh, web page for your future reference. So uh, I'll walk you through a little bit of this information here present on the web page. So here you'll have uh, the understanding of the rule and why we are doing this. As we've reiterated, it is uh, a criteria in the federal rule, and it's also uh, an EPA priority to ensure that all the sites that are being collected for lead and copper are collected from the highest priority sites. That is the highest worst case scenario sites, basically, uh, to ensure the confidence of the results coming uh, from the lead and copper sampling. If you navigate down here where it says create creating your own lead and copper site plan, you will find two hyperlinks. One of them being the lead and copper site plan template, the Excel spreadsheet that we will be talking about. And the other here would be the lead and copper site plan template guide sheet or a guideline fact sheet, which basically explains the entire Excel document step by step and what it means and, and the content that it has. OK. And for now, uh, we will be going here to the Lenin Copper site plan. So for those who are uh, trying to follow through uh, with me, uh, what I would do is uh, right click on this link. And then you will find the save link as so click on that. And then you would want to save the file. And we will call this. LCT. Or lead and copper template. And we'll just give it today's date 0502 2024. Let's say you'll save it on your desktop. I'll just click on save. Okay. Once you've saved it, it will appear here on your downloads, and uh, you can click on that. And this is what uh, will come up. Okay. So the first uh, sheet that you would see when you open the Excel spreadsheet are the instructional. Uh, guides of how to use this workbook. And we'll go through this step by step with all of you. And I, encu I encourage all of you to go uh, through this with me as well. OK, so the first step here is to input your system information in sheet one. So we'll go navigate down here to this tab that says sheet one. And over here, you'll be prompted to enter some of your basic system information that such as your water system name. And for today's example, let's say we'll call this system A. OK. And you'll enter your system PWS ID. And we'll give that a number. Let's just say one, two, three, four, five for now. And then you'll enter your system population. Let's just say system A has about uh, 12,000 people. Right away, when you enter your system population, if you look over here in the additional system information, you will see that it gives you the number of sites to be collected for standard monitoring and the number of sites to be collected for reduced monitoring over here. So whether you are on standard monitoring or reduced monitoring, these are the number of sites that you would be that you would need to enter for your site plan uh, template. And if you'd want to know more information on that, uh, please refer to your uh, scheduling annual monitor uh, and your annual monitoring uh, schedule. Okay. So we'll go. Uh, we'll keep going on. So then you'll enter your contact uh, information, your name. Uh, let's just, I'll just type in my name. Let's say Tark. I'll type in 
uh, your uh, phone number. I'll just write a dummy phone number here. It's 10231. OK, and then you enter your email address. System. A. At gmail.com. Just a dummy variable. And then uh, the date that you have submitted this template uh, to us to MDH. So we'll just write today's date. All right. So once we have all of that, uh, we've completed the information in sheet one, and we'll go back to the instructions tab and see what we need to do next. Okay. So the second step here says read through sheet two to determine sites to use for sampling. Sampling points from kitchen or, or bathroom only. Those are the only places that you can be sampling for lead and copper. And other tabs, uh, they require approval a prior from MDH. And sites must not have POU or POE, point of use or point of entry, unless all sites in the system have those POU or POE already installed, hence tier four. Okay. So we'll now go to sheet two, as the instruction said, and see what it has. So sheet two, uh, as we've discussed earlier in the presentation, uh, reiterates the, tr the tier criteria and, and the tier process that you will need to be going through for your system. So here again, you will have uh, tier one and it has the different subcategories within every tier. So tier one is single family homes. Let's zoom in a little bit here for, for all of you to see. So tier one, let's say single, yeah, it will have single family homes with lead service lines. If you did select yes to that, You'll be prompted to click on this status and it will explain then that at least half of your sites need to be from uh, from sites that have lead service lights. However, it is recommended by the EPA that all of your sites have lead service. All of your sites that you're collecting from uh, have uh, service lines, uh, lead service lines in them. So for the sake of example, uh, let's say system A over here, uh, let's say system A, uh, I'm, I'm on reduced monitoring. And in my system, to the best of my knowledge, I will go through this uh, criteria with you. Uh, let's say I've surveyed the area and I have, I'll go through this step by step. So does my system have lead service lines? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, system A does not have lead service lines, so I will move down to the next step. So single family homes with internal plumbing. So I know that my system has six homes that have lead, uh, uh, lead uh, internal plumbing, lead internal plumbing. So with that, I'll click, I'll say yes. And then it will say here that you will need to be collecting from those sites before going to the next year. Okay, and then I'll keep going down further. Uh, single family homes with lead gooseneck. To the best of my knowledge, let's say none of my uh, residents have lead goosenecks present in their homes. Then I'll skip this and I'll go down to the next uh, point here that says single family homes installed between 1983 and 1985. So yes, in fact, I let's say I have seven homes that are installed that way. So I'll need to, now I, I, I in my mind I have six homes with lead service lines and seven homes with this. So in total I have 13 sites that are tier one. And if I, I still need to collect 30 sites, remember my annual my annual monitoring schedule says I'll need to collect 30 sites. Okay. So I still have some more to fill in, but I'm out of tier one sites. So then you will move to tier two, as it mentions here in this uh, spreadsheet. So I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll go to tier two and I'll go through this process again. Now this tier two is basically the same thing as tier one, except it is a multifamily home residence. 
And let's say my system, system A, does not have any multifamily home residents. So with that, I'll completely skip tier two. And then I'll go and say no to all of that and move to tier three. Okay, so tier three says single family homes with copper plumbing with lead solder installed before nine before January 1st, 1983. So yes, I have um, I have 40 sites uh, at least that have this uh, criteria uh, that uh, this criteria agrees with. So the rest of my sites will uh, will be from this uh, from this tier. So you had you had 13 sites uh, from tier one and the remainder uh, will be from uh, this tier. So you'll have 17 sites from uh, tier three. Okay. Hypothetically speaking, if you didn't have tier three either, you'll then move to tier four and the remainder of all your sites will be a tier four category. So this is this is the mindset or this is the process that you would want to be going through as you're uh, selecting for your sites. You'd want to know what your system has and you want to go through this step by step, tier by tier. And there, it, it sounds convoluted, but there is there is a, there, there is a purpose uh, behind uh, this complexity is to ensure that you're collecting from the highest uh, priority sites um, as much as much from the highest priority sites as possible. So basically you're correcting from the worst case uh, scenario sites. To ensure your confidence in your uh, lead and copper sampling. So uh, once we're done with that, we'll go back to the instructions tab. OK. So the third step here says fill in uh, site information in, t in sheet three and only fill in information for blue highlighted cells. I must have enough sites to meet the lead and copper monitoring schedule. And we've done that in step two. We've, we, we've written down how many sites are going to be from tier one and how many sites are going to be from uh, tier three. OK. So we'll go to sheet three here. So sheet three will prompt you to write some information regarding those sites. Uh, so we'll walk through this and we'll walk through what every single uh, selection means here. OK, so let's say uh, hypothetically we'll give the first site the name system A1. OK, and then uh, what is the system side service line? You'll click on this drop down box and you'll select from these options. Uh, as we said, we have 13 sites and six of them uh, are lead service lines. So this one, uh, whether it's a system, it's a system lead service line. Okay. As for the customer side, let's say the customer side actually maybe renovated his house and instead of, instead of lead service line, he has copper service lines. And the internal plumbing is also a uh, copper, uh, copper pipe. OK. Internal plumbing too is optional in case the resident has um, multiple different types of materials installed in their homes. So you can pick, um, let's say he also has plastic along with his copper uh, with copper pipes. The home type uh, is a single family home. Because remember, we said we don't have any multifamily homes in system A. And the lead gooseneck present, yes or no? Well, I know that to the best of my knowledge, the residents uh, that live in system A do not have a lead gooseneck. So I'll write no for this. The year built. Uh, it's, it's built between uh, 1983 and 1985. And if I have a specific year in which this um, building is built, um, you can note that down over here. 
So let's say 1984. But it is optional. Uh, so if you do have the information, you can write it down. If you don't, that's OK. You can leave it blank. And then is the POU or POE present? Uh, is the, you know, these softeners or reverse osmosis devices, are they present in the home? And I know that the instructions said that those sites must not have POE or POU treatments installed. And I made sure that this site does not have that installed, so I'll write no. And where am I collecting this sample from? The kitchen. OK, and you can write down here any notes uh, that you uh, would like to share. And what is cool about this spreadsheet is that it will calculate the tier number automatically for you based on the selection that you've made. So you won't actually need to guess. Or go back to that uh, flow sheet to assess the tier number uh, that your site would have it would do that automatically for you simply based on the selection that you've made for the site. OK, uh, so let's let's do a different uh, a different example here. We'll call this system A2. <clears throat> so let's say some of my homes are. One of the sites is a galvanized service line. The customer side, however, let's say has copper service lines. And the internal plumbing is also copper service lines. It's a single family home. Lead gooseneck. Right now. Installed between 1983 and 1985. Well, I think it's installed. Let's let's just say it's installed before 1983 for the sake of giving different examples. And I don't know the specific date of when this site was built, so I'll just leave it blank. And POU, POE is no, and it is a bathroom site. So you go back here and it will tell you that this is a tier three site. OK. So this is how this is how this spreadsheet works and you want to fill in all of those sites. Let's say you're collecting 30, 30, 30 samples, so you'd be filling in 30, uh, 30 sites uh, just like this. OK, and here's a catch. So let's say at some point you have discovered that the site has a POU or a POE treatment. You'll go down here to the drop down box and say yes. And if you scroll back, it will tell you it won't give you a tier number. It will be an invalid site. It will tell you this site has a POU or POE. OK, so you need to change that. So it also catches those uh, little details so that you don't miss it out. OK, so let's just change that back here. All right then. So with that, um, I would encourage all of you to try it out for yourself. Um, fill it, fill it out, um, and um, we'll move forward from there. All right, so we'll go back to the instructions tab. So the final instructions tells you to go to uh, complete the site confirmation in sheet four. Uh, again, only fill in the blue highlighted cells and follow the steps to complete the uh, confirmation. So let's go to sheet number four. So sheet four is consider it as a final safeguard uh, before you submit your Excel spreadsheet. OK, so it takes you a it takes you step by step. To confirm that what you have assumed uh, is is matches what you have written down in sheet three. And what do I mean by that? So over here. You, it says if you if you if you go through this uh, step uh, stepwise tier one. Uh, presence of lead service lines at single family homes. Remember when we were filling in uh, the sheet uh, in, in sheet two. With all these different tiers, 
we said that we have six sites that are single family homes with lead service lines. So I will write six over here. And right away, it will tell you, is this confirmed? It will be a no, and it will tell you five more of those sites need to be added in sheet three. And if you go back to sheet three, you can see that we've only added one of those sites. Once you've confirmed, once you've added five more of those sites, it will then be confirmed. It's more of like a checklist for you so that you can confirm whatever you thought you had is correct. So for instance, we'll just keep it as one because we have one site that says lead service lines in tier and it's a tier one in system A1. Okay, we'll just write one and now it's confirmed and you don't need to take any further action. All right, so the presence of lead in home plumbing um, will say zero. The presence of lead gooseneck, uh, let's say it is zero again, and it is installed between 1983 and 1985. Remember, we said we had seven sites with those. So if you type in seven, it will tell you seven more of those sites need to be added to the plan list. So again, it it makes sure that you've entered down the correct sites in sheet three before you submit it as a fine. It's like a final checklist basically. OK, but for now, uh, so that we can move forward, we'll just uh, type in zero over there. And we've said that those multifamily homes, we don't have any multifamily homes, we'll just write zero for all of those. Okay. And now for tier three, I said that I had uh, 17 sites that are tier three. So if I write 17 here, it will tell me 16 more of those sites need to be added in sheet three. And in sheet three, we only have one of those sites. So you need to add 16 more to get to that 17 total sites. So again, it catches that error if you ever make it. So just for the sake of moving forward, we'll write one and it'll allow you to move forward. And we'll write, we don't have any tier four sites. We'll just write zero for that. So at the end, when, you've, when you're done with your uh, confirmation, all of these, and it, are going to be a yes if you've done it correctly. And for those that say no, it will tell you a process that is required to confirm it, such as how many sites you need to add uh, to have the tier one, uh, how many sites you need to add to, to make sure that it is, conf excuse me, to make sure that it is confirmed. Okay. All right, so that is the final uh, step of this uh, Excel spreadsheet. So with that, we will go back to the presentation slide. Go to the next slide here. And I'm sure a lot of you have questions, so please um, Add your questions to the chat. We'll have plenty of time uh, to go through uh, the questions that are being answered. I mean, the, the questions that are being posed. So please feel free uh, to ask to ask away your questions. OK, we all learn by asking questions, so please add your questions. So next, a big question here is what if the residents or resident uh, they don't want to participate in the lead and copper sampling. Let's say you have identified a site that is a tier one site and it's a highest priority site. However, you can't gain access uh, to this uh, to this resident home. That's completely fine. So, what what would you what you do uh, in this scenario? Again, on this web page, we have a form that is right over here at the very bottom that says lead and copper sampling 
record of participation form. And what this form basically uh, looked like is something uh, like this. Where you would fill in uh, the information of uh, your system. Over here at the top, your PWS ID, the system name, uh, the site ID, uh, which you could find on the chain of custody form and the year it, which it was constructed and the address and so forth. And in section one, uh, attempted contacts, you can just write in the date at which you've tried to contact this resident and uh, whether you are able to contact him, then the resident have refused uh, to, to allow you in their home or there is no contact with the owner. Um, so you could choose either one, either one of them. And you can just sign it off and send it to us. And once we receive that, we will then assign a different site uh, for in, in your chain of custody form that you can uh, go to. But before changing uh, any sites on the chain of custody form that have been approved and assigned, uh, this record of participation form must be filled if you would want to replace a site with another one to make sure that, the, the, that you cannot gain access uh, to the resident home. Okay. So uh, where do you submit this information? So once you've completed all of this, uh, once you've completed the Excel uh, uh, spreadsheet, uh, where do you submit and, or, or you want to submit your participation forms, you would go again to the website at the very bottom here, it says submit a site plan template. You'll just click on that and then there is an email address over here and we'll post that on the chat as well uh, for whoever wants to uh, just copy paste uh, that email address and use it. Okay. In the scenario, where a system has collected samples before uh, submitting the site plan template, uh, there will be a monitoring and recording uh, violation that would be issued. Uh, with that, a public notice must be issued by the system in the Consumer Confidence Report, the CCR, and that is a tier three public notice. And systems who are on a three year uh, schedule will then move to a one year monitoring uh, schedule. Uh, so please uh, uh, fill in the uh, site plan template prior to sampling uh, from these lead and copper sites. Because it reinforces, again, it reinforces the confidence uh, in those results and ensures that you're collecting from the worst case scenario um, in your system ensures the safety of the residents and the systems as well. And with that, this is the end of the presentation. So I thank all of you for attending this webinar.